before the video starts, make sure you follow our socials in the description and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Welcome back to the Offbeat Podcast, back again this week with me, your host Luke Bardsley, as always, with a very special guest today, Joe Darnell from All Right, who is in the building. How are we, mate? All good, mate, yeah. Nice one for having me. No, big thanks for coming down, to be fair. Uh, I mean, you are one of sort of like the hottest um, northern bands, I want to say, at this moment oh, in time. Do you reckon? I've had, yeah, I've had quite a lot of bands who have had on recently, and I've been starting asking people for recommendations and a lot of them have said you. Oh, really? With, wow. All right, yeah. A lot of people are liking what you do. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about the band. So you are based in Blackpool, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so are you, are you all from Blackpool, all, all five of you? Um, yeah, so we're all from Blackpool, um, but a few of us live in Manchester now. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously Blackpool's the, the hub for us all, really. So That's the whole yeah, sound, we yeah. Are, we are a Blackpool band, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Half, half living in Manchester, half living in Blackpool. Yeah. It's good, though, isn't it? Because you've got, <coughs> with half you living in Manchester, half Blackpool, you've got so many sort of local venues to play at. Like you've got Manchester, Liverpool was, what, an hour away? Yeah, yeah. You've then got, you could go into Lancashire with, like, Preston, Burnley, Blackburn. You could do all of the northern sort of circuits. Yeah, you? that's it. It's a good it's a good little spot, really. Good and little. getting connections in both towns as well is yes. decent, yeah. How is, how is the Blackpool scene? Because I don't know anything about the Blackpool music <laughs> scene. I will be honest with you. How How is it like? Yeah, it's, um, I think it's it's getting better. In the last few years, I'd say it's it's starting to get a bit better. There's a, a few bands coming through as well with like a similar similar vibe to us. In the past, there probably wasn't much. There's never really been any any massive artist. I mean, you've had a few. One of the fellas from Pet Shop Boys is from Black. Oh, nice. Um, and a few little little bits that have broke through, like um, Ray Morris and people like that. But mm. yeah, it's it's a weird one. And when out of town bands come to Blackpool, I think they struggle to sell tickets as well because. Who, got, who fucking goes to Blackpool? <laughs> yeah, it's a good <laughs> you point. I mean? You're either from Blackpool and go to Blackpool, yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. I mean, people go, don't they, for a piss up and that, but it's not somewhere you'd think, oh, I'm going to go gonna go on the, to Blackpool on their tour. So yeah, I do yeah. think out-of-town bands struggle. Um, there's a couple of good little venues, um, Bootleg mm-hmm. and Waterloo, probably the, the two main ones. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's okay, but it's... Not quite. Manchester. It's growing though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's on the up, definitely. Well, you, we're seeing that a lot at the moment with towns growing, right? Because yeah. it used to just be, you either played in the city or you didn't play at all. Yeah, yeah. Whereas now, you're looking at like, like Wigan, for example. Everyone's using Wigan as, as the example nowadays because of all the bands coming out yeah, of there. Yeah, but it's classic. It just moment. shows when you have a few kind of core group of bands, it just brings a scene to you, doesn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. Especially the promoters. So do, do you feel like promoters are sort of looking at these town bands now as well? Because when I'm looking at sort of like, like this feeling, for example, you've worked yeah, with, yeah. They, they've got bands from a lot of different towns as well. Of the sort of marketing, do you think that's like a big push for promoters at the moment? I think so, yeah. Because I think obviously it's people don't want to talk about it, do they? But they ultimately want to sell tickets. Don't yeah, they? of course so they do. If they can get a band that's the band in that hometown, they know that they're gonna gonna sell a few tickets, aren't they? So I am, I've never spoke to them about their like model, but I imagine that's probably it in there. It probably makes it? Yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, it does make sense. And everyone loves a hometown gig. Oh, mate. Class. We had one a few weeks ago and it was it was bound. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> so good, mate. You've got yeah. everyone there. People been with you from day one yeah. as well. Makes you think that, yeah, we're we're proper banders, you know, <laughs> everyone's on shoulders, <laughs> like that. Yeah, I'm having a bit of this. <laughs> Cause you see it a lot at the moment, because obviously being in Manchester, like Cortinas, for example, playing all the hometown. I've seen him about what, 15 times. Yeah, I'm the same. I've yeah. seen him like, I think about 32 times or something. 32? Yeah, yeah. Bloody when I was like from hell. like 15, I think, was my first one at like the MEN. And I've just like, every time I was like, yeah, yeah. And I've, I've pulled back a bit last few See, years. See, I've pulled back yeah. a bit the last few years as well. It's, it's ever since, the, I'd, Heaton Park, I hate it. Yeah. I yeah. think it's... Getting home, in it? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's because obviously where I live, it is middle of nowhere for me, yeah, Heaton yeah. Park. It's one of them where you've got to get a tram and you can't get a tram home because they're just rammed. Everyone yeah, it's in the same boat. It? It's the only like venue where I'm looking at and I'm like, I hope you don't play there. <laughs> but anywhere else in Manchester, I love. Yeah, yeah. They're great, but Heaton Park for me. It's hard work, and it? we, we've walked back from there before, you know, to the city town. To city centre. Just because it was that hard work trying to get home, we're just like, we'll just keep walking and we'll eventually get a taxi. And you keep walking in a few miles in. <laughs> and you're like, Might as well just go all the way now, aren't we? <laughs> How long did that take? It was a good, good hour and a half or something. You know, when there's a few years where yeah, you've, yeah. Had, you've had a drink and that, it was like. Pfft. Hard work. <laughs> we, we did the same coming back from the cricket ground once, and we, we I 
think we, we went like completely the wrong way, ended up at Salford and we went, let's just get the tram. <laughs> <laughs> just find the tram yeah. for me because we were like, this is pointless now. It's, it's every pointless. What sort of venues, have you got like a list of venues that you definitely want to play that stand out to you as a band? Um, I think it's more cities that we want to play as opposed, oh, nice. to, as opposed yeah. to venues because we've ticked quite a lot of them off now like your Liverpools, your Manchesters, Sheffield but we've never headlined there so headline in Sheffield is definitely something we want to do. We've not played Scotland yet. Nice. So, so Scotland's definitely like Glasgow. Glasgow's got to be yeah. done on it. Um, obviously you've got iconic venues in Glasgow but any really just the Scottish crowds are meant to be mega aren't they? So, if they get behind you they get behind yeah, you. Yeah you know you've, you've, you're doing alright if you've got them so I think so, at some point this year we need to try and get up there. That's I think yeah, it's a good idea. It's a good good way to sort of branch out, and as you were saying, like supports is the best way to do that. Yeah, yeah. Because like if you get on, for example, if you if you get on a Sheffield band show straight away, you there's a hundred people there you've never who've never listened to you. Yeah, All you need is it. ten, don't you? And that's then you the build and build and build sort of on that. So, are, are you looking? So have you played sort of like down south as well? Are you just predominantly north based. Um, um, it's mainly been in the north. We've been. So we did London, uh, when was this? February, that was our first nice. time in London. It wasn't just our gig, it was like a bit of a showcase through Hot Vox, I don't know if you've heard of them. Mm -hmm. It's like um, a similar vibe to this feeling, but yes, a little yeah. bit smaller. So there was a few acts on before us and then we came on and it was bouncing, it sold out, um, got dead good feedback, like you say, because it was fans of the other people that were playing and they've all followed us since and stuff. We've been asked to go back down. So, um, But that's, that's as far south as, as we've been. So I think... Somewhere like Brighton needs to be. Oh, Brighton's the one to be on in the gigs. as well, yeah. It's just iconic, isn't it? But, and, then, and, then, and then we have just played Jersey this weekend. So, but I don't know, do you class that as down south? Or it's its own little... It's, it's its own little... Yeah. It's as far south as you can go. <laughs> I know, it? but, yeah. Um, it's the island, isn't it? So we've literally... I just flew How back. did that come about? So getting booked for a Jersey gig? Well, so I, I was born in Jersey. Oh, um, nice. I only lived there until I was two. Mm -hmm. So my mum and dad um, decided to move back to England because they had my brother who's a bit older than me. Mm -hmm. And when they had a, a second kid, Jersey's mad expensive. He was like, right, we can't, can't afford to live here with two kids. We'll go, Tax -saving, go isn't back it? to England. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So ended up moving to Blackpool. So I, I've classed myself as being from Blackpool. I was born in Jersey, but I grew up you in grew Blackpool. Up, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we were like, right, we've done... Done Manchester a couple of times. We've sold out Liverpool, sold out Manchester, done Blackpool, done Preston. I'm like, what what can we do now? It's a little bit different. We're a few years in. And I was like, well, I've still got a couple of uncles in Jersey. I've still got my fa mum's family friends and that. Yeah. And I thought, a few of our mates will come over to Jersey. So I said, right, if I can book a gig, are we up for it or what? And the lads were like, yeah, fill your boots. Like, they probably thought, he's never going to fucking pull me. No, it's <laughs> never happening this. <laughs> so about two hours later, I was like, Right, we're booked to play Blue you Note know, on this day, <laughs> Easter weekend. We're having it, right, you need to book your flights and that's when we've got a few mates in. Nice. And then it sold out in about a week. <laughs> so, sold out in about <laughs> So a you're week. looking at it like, good on two nights. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, and then, so when we've gone this weekend as well, we sold something like 80 tickets. It was, it's a small venue, like quite, quite compact. And the fella's like, um, do you reckon, you, you, you up for stretching it? Because there's people from Jersey asking, can we pay on the door? Because they mustn't get many bands go over. It's a good point, though. Yeah, it? yeah. I've never thought about. So there was a bit of like a buzz about about the place because no one no one goes over. So we said, well, it's your venue, mate, but we obviously want everyone comfortable in there. So we said, yeah, we'll sell on the door to try and stretch it. So I think we ended up having about one twenty in there. Nice. We we're turning people away at the door. <laughs> so the fella at the end of the night goes, "When do you fly back?" I said, well, "A couple of them are on." On Monday um, or Tuesday, I don't know when they're coming back. I said, but I'm going back tomorrow. He said, oh, fucking hell. I'd have had you on again tomorrow because I reckon we'd have sold it. <laughs> <laughs> Do a five-night stretch. <laughs> <laughs> she could have done like fucking three nights in Jersey. <laughs> Mate, that's, it's, it's good though because if you've got a quiet like, patch now... You could do Jersey and Guernsey, yeah, couldn't you? You could go could... over to Jersey, yeah. yeah. But it was some weekend, to be fair. It was, oh, it's it was quite, so yeah. good, yeah. See, so, yeah, the furthest I've gone to Ireland is, is just the Isle of Wight, and cause my girlfriend's family are from uh, live on there now. Oh, right. Class over there. It's like a different way of living. Yeah, I've never been to Isle of Wight, but Jersey, it's just like so clean. So is, nice. is it very sort of laid back as well, like sort of slower pace? Yeah, it seems that, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's just boozers everywhere. I love a pub, man. You know, like proper English boozers. <laughs> yeah, I but love And then pub. nice beaches as well, so. 
Yeah, it's a good place. I'd recommend it. I do love a pub as well. I I could never go to a club again. I but no, get, get me in a dirty boozer where you've That's got a me, guy. Yeah. yeah, well, you got a guy sat at the bar doing a crossword, <laughs> yeah. eating like some nuts or something <laughs> with a pint, and I'm like, I'm at home. Yeah, here. yeah, I'll sit here all day. <laughs> I'm, 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 just, as long as I've got a form of sport on. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. matter what it is, I'm happy. Yeah. A bit of tune, a bit, bit of music on as well, and a pool and table, a couple want. of games, and you sound, aren't you? Yeah, I'm a dartboard man, me, I'm big into darts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love, love, love the that. darts, it's class. I wanted to talk a few, uh, about a few of your sort of experiences at the moment as a band. So, the main one at the moment is obviously Tangerine Dream has just like blown up for you as a song. Yeah, yeah. And the video was quite special. You filmed it at Blackpool's Ground, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. How did that come about? <laughs> well, so, it was weird. So, we really like kicked on in 2021 well that was it it was a lockdown thing I've, nice like, we were chatting before we? I'm a PE teacher I'm not yeah. really like a yeah, musician lockdown I started playing a few chords met, met Matt and we were like fucking hell should we have a go at this thought nothing of it and it, that was in, in lockdown and then 2021 we released the first two tunes Rat Race and mm -hmm. Lover's Game that was in the March and Matt had come up with the idea of Tangerine Dream and he'd sent it me so and then we were bouncing ideas over whatsapp he'd send me a voice note i'd send one back and this was at the time that lover's game was about to come out oh nice so we were working on tangerine dream but there was no rush to release it and then black blackpool right in uh league one at the time mm -hmm. it, and it, and we had like a late push for promotion and the song's not about the, the club it's about the town isn't it you know, yes you're from, yeah, you're yeah from a northern working class town it's a shithole but it's our shithole yeah yeah even though it's great, it's not enough, you want more. And we were like, could we fucking rush this release and get it in, time in, it the right time. in line with the playoffs yeah. when, the, when the, the, the town's on a bit of a buzz? So we were like, right. So we recorded it all ourselves um, nice. through Joe. who Self-funded as well. Yeah, right? did it all ourselves, it just in, into, a lap, into an interface, into a laptop. And like rushing through and thinking, please get to the playoff final. Like, it's going you know, to work out perfectly. So I think we released it on like the Friday. And we were in the playoff final on like the, the Sunday. Jeez, so, like, it's a big rush for yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So, we put it out there and it was like perfect time. And everyone was fucking buzzing off it, like, oh my God, this tune Tangerine Dream. And then we were like, um, shall we just be be cheeky and ask the club if we can record? So, we hadn't we didn't have the video at that point. So, should we cheeky and ask the club if we can um, record it in Bloomfield Road? No, in fact, no, it was because it, it was before the playoffs. So it must have been about a week before it was being released on Spotify where we were going to record the video. So we said, can we come into to Bloomfield Road? And we knew a fella called Scott Clarkson who did the media for Blackpool. Nice. Didn't really know him. He just followed us on Instagram through the band stuff. Um, so we messaged him and he said, I'll see what I can do. He went, right, yeah, you can come in on this day. It was the day before the home leg of the playoffs. Class. So they said, you can come in, but you can't go on the pitch. And we were like, oh, we weren't expecting to go on the pitch anyway. And then when we got there, we met him and that, and he went, they've said you can go on the pitch now. We haven't even asked. <laughs> he said, you can go on the pitch, but you just can't go in the centre circle. Cause obviously it's good piano, isn't it? Yeah, it was mint. Yeah, so they were like, you can't go in the centre circle. I'm guessing because it was going to be on Sky, they didn't want us fucking rushing Shop, it up. Yeah, yeah. So if you notice on the video, we're stood literally on, on the out of the, se the centre <laughs> circle, and that's the reason for it. But yeah, it was just like, it was a bit surreal. There was no one else in the ground. It was just us. We were just walking around, like, just filming it again, doing it ourselves, like... Do you know where you were sat in the stand? Is that like where you, where any of you sit for a games, or is um, it just? It, I sit in that stand, but I'm a bit further along and, and down. Because when I was looking at it, I was, I was like, I wonder if that's their seat. Because if yeah. that was me, yeah, you'd go I'd, to the seat. I'd be in my seat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the I thing think. is, I sit right at the very bottom, so it wouldn't have been like a wouldn't have been the best shot. Yeah. Camera yeah. shot, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, from there, I think everyone in the town buzzed off it initially um, because of the video and because Blackpool had just been promoted. But then a couple of like random things happened that then blew it up to people that weren't from Blackpool. So mm -hmm. um, one morning I woke up, I, I get up at like half oh, five for work and I woke up and my phone had like hundreds of notifications on, on like the band account. But I couldn't find like the source of what it was, like loads of people following us, loads of people liking us. And I was like, what the fuck What's is happening? It was a random midweek night because I had work yeah. the next day. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I'm scrolling back, scrolling through. And it was the fella from the Pet Shop Boys. Well, so the Pet Shop Boys on every single social media platform had put, love this tune about my hometown. 
and and it was Chris from the Pet Shop Boys. Never met him, never spoke to him. Got no like, like there was no reason for it to happen. But from that, it just fucking went went mad. Like the streams like just kept going up and up and up. And then that all calmed down. We had loads of new followers off it. And then a few months later, my brother fought on the Fra- uh, against Fraser Clark on the Amir Khan Kelbrook undercard. Yeah. Got leathered like, but he it was a last minute thing. He got drafted in about two days before the fight. Um, and he didn't tell me that he was going to walk out to Tangerine Dream. Class. So the same things happened. It was like three before the main event. So you can imagine the fucking millions will have been watching it. And he walks out to Tangerine Dream. And again, the phone's just going fucking mad. Someone had put on Twitter, what's what's the the walkout tune for this this lad, Jake Darnell? And then everyone was like, oh, it's, a, it's his brother's band. And that was it then. It was just Straight like, away, he's just bang, rolling bang, off. Yeah, it was just going mad, yeah. So we've been quite lucky with a few little things yeah. like that. Um, so yeah, it's blags are red. I wonder every, how they found it, you know. Your depot going to be on a on, on a gig with Pet Shop Boys in the future. I hope so, man. Yeah, I'm, thinking, I'm like I'm crossing my fingers for Isle of Wight this year, so we can because they're headlining. Oh, they are, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. it's like, them Prodigy and someone else. I can't remember who the third one is. Yeah, I can't I, remember. But I, I saw really want to go. I've been I've said it a few times now, but I really want to go. But obviously, I told you my girlfriend's a teacher. Yeah, and it's oh, it's slap bang right in and I'm like oh, do know, it a that, month later well that's it with me so obviously we're in with this feeling and we know this yeah. feeling I've staged at Isle of Wight and stuff and we've we've not had any talks about it yet but with us being on big in 2024 this year we're, we're hoping you get that, that they're going to give us a festival fingers crossed um, but I'm thinking if they give us Isle of Wight I'm the same aren't I I'm a teacher yeah you, so you, I'm like, you're going to have to yeah, say so, so if my head teacher's watching I might need the Friday <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll see if I can put in like some sort of special leave. But if not, it'll be literally finish on the Friday, straight, straight down there. to Isle of Wight, straight back on the Sunday, and then back into work on the Monday. <laughs> but I suppose it's it'd be worth uh, it. Yeah, it's one of them, innit? That's mad that the whole town just got behind. Did you did you do any like when you were publicising it? Did you reach out to like the newspapers and stuff, or was it just like a natural sort of people? Um, I, think, I think with that one, no, it, the papers didn't get on it. I mean, the, we had been in the local paper before, yeah. um, because we sold out um, the whole that bootleg for our nice. first ever gig. Yeah, yeah. So that was just a bit, again, a bit random. Family and friend, it was our first ever gig, and um, that sold out. So that sort of caught their attention. So I think a few people already followed us, mm-hmm. but it's just word of mouth. Blackpool's a small, everyone knows everyone. Yeah, it's yeah, a small yeah. town. Everyone knows everyone, and to be fair, it's. It has a bad reputation, but everyone backs everyone as well. Yeah. Like it's if we we put something out there, everyone shares it. You know, friends of friends, friends of families. Yeah, it's a good town for that. Do you know, like, because obviously you've got quite a few towns surrounding Blackpool as well, like Fleetwood Field, for example. Yeah, do they sort of back you as well? Obviously, football wise, big rivalry. But aside from, uh, do, do you get people travelling into Blackpool from like Fylde and Fleetwood? Well, it's a funny. St- our drummer and bass player are actually from Fleetwood. Oh, are they? Yeah, so when we originally started the band, it was just, well, four of us from Blackpool. Um, but one of them, the, the original drummer, Josh, he was a student in, no, he wasn't a student, he just finished being a student in Leeds, yeah. so, but he was living in Leeds. But because it was the time of lockdown when we were first started out, he was back living at his mum and dad's just to save a bit of money. Yeah, yeah. So we, we thought it was just going to be a lockdown piss about. But then when it was still going, as it was time for him to move back to Leeds... He was just like, oh, I can't, I can't, can't carry on doing yeah, it, which yeah. is completely fine. Yeah. Um, but what we'd done was for our gig, because like it was just four mates having a piss about, that first original gig, we needed to draft someone in on bass. Okay. So when I was like 14, 15, I used to go and watch this band called Loon Deep, and it was a Fleetwood band because I knew yeah. that the lead singer. So I used to go and watch them everywhere. They were like half covers and half originals. Okay, yeah, yeah. But they, they don't go anymore. So when it was our gig, I said, I'll, I'll get onto their bass player, Brad. So we drafted him in just for, for that first gig. And he was like, oh, I fancy a bit of this. I'll stick it out. And we were like, yeah, buzzing. Because he's like a very, very talented lad. So he's our current bass player. Yeah. So when Josh left, it was like, right, we need a drummer. We'll get the drummer from Loon <laughs> yeah. as well. So they're, they're, they're actually Fleetwood boys. Um, so we do have a bit of banter because Brad in particular, he, he is a Fleetwood fan. Yeah. Um, but we... We've we've got our whole image of, of we are a Blackpool band, so they bring people in from Fleetwood, but we do have a little bit. But of, yeah, you, a little bit of banter as well. When like. it comes to marketing, unfortunately, you're gonna have to wear a Blackpool shirt. <laughs> he has said before, he's like, I'll fucking wear a Fleetwood shirt on stage one day. You know? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, just do that when we're doing the 
when we do like an <laughs> arena show, that's when you can do it. Yeah. When we get to that stage. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's it, it's good. Um, the whole file coast really really back it to be yeah fair. that's all you, you can't complain can you and then you did quite a big show recently didn't you at the um, top of the tower that you and you felt you filmed at the top of there as well yeah so that was a couple of years ago that um again that was the same year as our first ever gig so, really so because we sold out that bootleg show and it went like way better than expected the tower reached out to us they reached to you <laughs> yeah. i did not think yeah, that would happen yeah it was mad um so they basically Floor five, I think it is. It used to be the jungle gyms of the tower. So if you ever went as a kid, that was the jungle gym, yeah, yeah. The play area thing. And that's got ripped out and they made a gig venue. So they'd, they'd only recently made it. And then they said, we've got to start getting bands on. Do you want to play it? And we were like, yeah, fucking Of course they do. Going to play the tower. We were thinking, might be a bit big for us. like, But I think it was like a 700 capacity. But we thought, we can't say no to this opportunity. No, we yeah, just yeah. got to fucking go for it. So we took it, and I think we ended up selling about 550, like, very much. Like two songs? Yeah, we, we literally released Lover's Game, Rat Race, and Tangerine Dream. We sold out <laughs> Bootleg, which was for, like, 3.30. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, six months later, I sold 550 at the Tower, and it was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> but in the run-up to that gig, yeah. again, we were just like, a bit like we did with Bloomfield Road, like, should just be cheeky and, like, say... They fancy letting us up at the top of the tower to record some promo, thinking they'd tell us to fuck off. They were like, "Yeah, no, definitely, come, yeah, come yeah, down yeah. and we'll, we'll we'll get the sound man to bring the mixing desk up because that's on wheels and stuff, and he'll he'll do the sound for you and that." And we were like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, they, "It's one of them though. If you don't ask, you don't get." Yeah, it, so we went up there, did that. That's on YouTube. Like, it's a bit of one of them as well, though, because it's because it's an old video and we were still very new to it. Yeah. We watch it back now and we're like, "If we did that again, we'd sound so much better." But, I think you should do it again. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to we'll have to probably bide our time to to get back up there. But yeah, it's it's one of them. It's like how many people can say they've they've done a done a performance at the at the top of the tower? The top of the, you, great. Peter K. Yeah, there's not been many, has there? So yeah, mental. Fast, mad. It's, we, especially because we were talking a little bit in in before we started filming, didn't we? And you got a couple new singles sort of on the horizon, like. As soon as a couple of new singles, mate, an EP comes out, you can always reach out to them again and say, come on. Yeah, yeah. Go back up there. Like yeah. You might as well, because people, the thing is with YouTube, it the algorithm works a little bit, doesn't it? So you'll get people coming back and all you need to do is type in All Right Live. Yeah. And yeah. that'll come up and straight it away, up, won't yeah. it? Definitely. So um, what are your sort of goals for this year then? Because you said, have you got sort of two singles in the pipeline at the moment that you're working on? Is that right? Yeah, so we're working on two. Um, we've got the demos of both of them. It is literally just a case of getting in and recording them yeah um so I'm, we're, we're gonna release them separately but we're planning on releasing them quite close together and fairly soon like it's we get we want to get them done as quickly as possible release one and then hopefully four weeks later or something release another. Kick on. Yeah, because yeah. we haven't actually released a tune to, since i think june last year which was dress code and that's a long time for a band of our size to to go without releasing because mm -hmm. spotify listeners do start to dwindle i mean we've been quite lucky it's still sat around the the thousand monthly listeners it's not dropped too much but it's the way it is it's such a fast moving thing the industry yeah, yeah yeah so we're going to try and get a couple out in the next next few months um and then we're hoping to do a little bit of a mini uk tour nice back end good. of the year yeah um so around november time we we'll sort of tick off a few of them cities that we were talking about, weren't you? That's yeah, we'll probably do a couple that we've already done. Like, I think we'll probably have to throw a Manchester one in there. Are you, have you got any sort of... Are you looking at Northern Quarter? Or? Yeah, well, there's loads, in there? There's so many. There's so many. Yeah, like. so many to choose from. So we'll have to see, like, what... What would you be looking at sort of like between a 300 and 600 capacity sort of slot? Maybe a little bit less. I Maybe think. a little bit less. With, with it being in, in a tour, I yeah. think if it was just going to be a standalone gig, we could probably start pushing to, like, 300 in Manchester now, I think. Yeah. But... Um, with it being coincided with a tour, you might, I think we might struggle to pull. Northern Quarter's probably the, the one in it. Like, yeah. Probably the easiest place. Yeah, it's, it's, but it's, it's crazy it's so Manchester many. how many venues. Are. I've, it's it's mad Manchester. You could literally go to a gig every single night. Every you? night. Do you know what? I actually follow something on TikTok that tells you what gigs are on every night of the week. No way. And like, it's mad. On a, you should just see on a random Tuesday night, there's about fucking nine gigs yeah, going on and you're like, what's happening here? <laughs> I and mean, you'll be like, I got it. I'm like, they're all right then. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it's mad. Like, because I go on, I follow one on Twitter, like Manchester Gigs, it's called. And it's the same there. They release it on like a Monday, gigs this week. And it's like 
12 gigs every, every single night. night. It's like, fair play. <laughs> if, you, if, if you were like a student or living in the centre of town, oh, mate, you'd be at a gig every night. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Especially if it's like between five and 10 quid a ticket. Yeah, you might it's as well. Easy, it's easy, nice yeah. entry. Can't complain, can you? Definitely. Um, I mean, it, it would also help with the two of you being, if you could get like that Manchester audience as well, with two of you living in Manchester. Nice little... Yeah, yeah, well, that's, we did, um, where did we do last? At 33 Oldham Street last Yes, year. yeah, so yeah. So it's yeah, only yeah. small, it was like 100 capacity. Yeah. But similar thing, we did that for, for this feeling, um, and that sold out in, like, well, I think it went on sale about a week before, and we did all right in tickets, and then there was like a, a two-day window about a week later where it just sold out. It just splurged. Yeah, yeah, like straight away, all gone. And this feeling with them buzzing with us, like, fucking hell, like, you've done all right there, haven't you? And we're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so we will have to go in a bigger venue next time, I think, yeah. just, just, just because of that. But yeah, I think it, it's just such a good city, isn't it, for music? It is, it's great. I mean, um, quite a lot of big, big cities at the moment. Liverpool's another one at the moment. There's yeah. so many bands and all sorts coming out of Liverpool. And... I love the Liverpool sound, me. I think yeah. if that's... When I write tunes, I think that I'm influenced by the, the Liverpool, nice. Liverpool vibe, you know, like cast and the Verve aren't Liverpool, are they the Wigan? But I think they've got, it's like that Britpop sound and, you know, the, the acoustic guitar in with yes. like the, the raw vocal, that's that's proper my vibe, that. Yeah, cast was, um, they were in Stockport recently. A couple of lads from work went and they said it was so good. Well, I went in Liverpool the other day, yeah. um, to, well, that's about a week and a half ago. Such a good band. Underrated as well, I think. They're, they're not really talked about, are they? That's it, yeah. Well, out of all my mates, like all my mates are banging to the music and stuff. Yeah. And whenever I throw in like a, a cash out, like no one ever... See, I don't really listen to them either, but yeah. I've just come across... I've been listening to them more just because of the lads I work with. Yeah. And they look, they're banging to them. But it's one of them where they have like the diehard, don't they? Oh, the yeah. Proper yeah. diehard band. I and mean, then if you know, you know, it's yeah, one of them. And they'll, like they'll go community. everywhere, yeah. Yeah, and they will follow us. <laughs> yeah, probably. Definitely everywhere. Um, should we have a little break? And then part two, we'll come back. We'll talk more about sort of like Blackpool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a bit about football as well. About boxing, because I can't believe it. Your brother's a, <laughs> a journeyman. I was like, go on. Yeah, it's random, that. Isn't it? <laughs> it's <Yeah>. very random. <laughs> we'll be back in part two. Thank you. Part two, and we are back. Um, just wanted to sort of highlight a little bit on the band. So obviously we focused on, you've got two lads from Fowl, don't you? Obviously you've got you, who is from, and then the fourth and fifth member is one of the other lads uh, from Blackpool. So the drummer, bassist, they're both from Fowl, aren't they? Yes, yeah, so you from Fleetwood then too. Yeah, you're from Fleetwood, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got, is there another lad from Blackpool as well? Yeah, so uh, Matt on rhythm, acoustic guitar, yes. he's from Blackpool. So he's the one who started it all off with you? Yeah, yeah, me and, and Matt, and he still lives in Blackpool. Yes. Um, so are you just like childhood mates? Well, mutual friends really. So one of my good mates went to school with Matt. Okay. Um, so we always knew of each other and seen each other around stuff. Like I said before, everyone in Blackpool sort of knows Knows everyone. each other, yeah, yeah. And then we were in a, it was, I met him properly and, Got, got into the music chat at a party just after, as lockdown restrictions were easing, we were at like a, a, a party at my mate's yeah. cafe. There was about, only about 25 heads there. And he's, he's talking to me about music and I'm saying, oh, I know about four chords on guitar now because I've been strumming away. <laughs> so he said similar. So then there was an acoustic guitar upstairs. So then we were, funny story. So I was, I was lit up, he was lit up. And I'm singing along to this tune that he's wrote and he's got notes on his phone. And everyone comes in and they're like, hey, it sounds all right, that. It's quite good. And we were like, right, yeah. So next day we're like, should we go and book like in a little practice room? None of us had ever done like that before. It was like, yeah, go on. But he could do with some other guitarists though. So I drafted in Joe, who I went to school with. Yeah. And then Josh, who was the drummer, who went to school with Matt. But I was also his mate as well. So there was four of us there, four mates, just pissing about. Where there wasn't much going on, people were still furloughed. Yes, you could come together in a practice room. Yeah, yeah. I was still working um, in the school, but it was minimal. It was like I was working till 12, so I was in Blackpool a lot. And it was just, we, there was so much time to, to mess about. And, and yeah, do just stuff. mess about, yeah. sort of play around. So that was the original lineup. Um, but then obviously Josh went off to Leeds, and we got Smithy in and Brad from Fleetwood. But then we still had Joe, who was the lad I went to primary and secondary yes. school with. Yeah, yeah. Top lad, really talented musician. He can play everything. Um, and he, he was the lead guitarist. And then coming up to Christmas time, he, he just sort of said to us, still still very good mates with him, still played Jersey with us the other day. He just said, it's getting a little bit like 
bit too much. I can't commit all my time to it because he's into like his producing side of things as well. Oh, so he, nice. He yeah, does yeah. a bit of production for smaller bands from Blackpool. Um, he's just he's recently bought a house. He's doing a lot of work on his house. Yeah. And he just said, for one reason or another, I just can't fully commit to everything that we're doing, which was completely fine. We respected his decision. Um, so then we were on the hunt for another lead guitarist. Joe said he'll fulfil any gigs that we've got that we can't cover. Yeah. Um, hence why he still played Jersey. Um, I think he's going to do a couple in the summer. Um, we had a couple of gigs at the start of the year where we had our mate Connor, who's in Hugh and the Greater Good. I'm not sure if you've heard of them. No, no. So they're like a Manchester-ish band, but they're yeah. a bit more, a bit different to us. They're a bit like folky. Oh, so nice. So Connor, yeah. um, one of our mates, he filled in for a couple of gigs. Um, but then my mate was in Twisted Wheel, or is in Twisted Wheel, if they're still active, um, Ben from round here. So... I met him when I first moved to Manchester, like five years ago. Well, um, just random way. Yeah. So, do you, how the fuck do you meet all your guitarists from Twisted Wheel? Just random way. <laughs> did you ever go to the original Jimmy's? No, um, no, but like, I know of it. So yeah. it was like a proper dive bar, wasn't it? And it, it was one of them places, like because of the music scene. And yes. Stuff, like, yeah, yeah. Like I was banging into my music. I was never in a band, but I was into my music. So we sort you sort of know everyone in there. And I was in there one night um, with Fred Farrell from. Say to play, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, yeah. And he, he's introduced me, he said, oh, Ben there, he's sound lad. So I just started chatting to Ben, I was chatting to him all night. Didn't He didn't even clock, like, he didn't say he was in Twisted Wheel or anything, but we just got on. And then at the end of the night, he just sort of said, oh yeah, I'm in Twisted Wheel. I was like, fuck off, I'm seeing you in Blackpool next week, <laughs> you're playing bootleg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, you fucking hell, buzzing. So then he's come over to Blackpool and he was like, um, oh, like, do you want to go out after it and that? So we ended up staying at my mum and dad's house in Blackpool and me <laughs> after the Twisted Wheel gig. And from then, we've just been like dead, good, dead, yeah. good, dead good mates. So since the van started, I've always been like, yeah, you'll be in us one day, you like, in, in one way or another. And he was like, oh, I'm too busy and whatnot. So when we had Connor filling in for a couple of gigs and there was a couple that Connor couldn't do here and there, so Ben filled in um, and then he filled in for us at the Waterloo. So at this point, when we played the Waterloo at the start of March, yeah. We still didn't have a, we had, we still don't, we're without a lead guitar. It weren't a set line we've, up, yeah. We've yeah. sort of just got three people that are filling in for us. We've still got the core band and three people that'll help us out as and when, which is great. Um, but Ben, after that gig, was like, look, I think I fancy a bit of it um, when I can fully commit, because he does bits in all different types of bands and yeah, stuff. Yeah, will do. Um, so there's a few gigs in the summer that he still can't do. But he said, as long as we, we are given enough notice for gigs and stuff, hence, like, we're, we're booking the tour in advance. Um, so he's hopefully going to step in and, and start doing a bit with Jesus us. Jesus Christ, so, he's not shit, is he? <laughs> yeah, so on, on one of these tunes we were on about before, um, we had the tune down, and I'd sent it to him. This was before he'd, like, committed. But I said, what would be your idea for, like, a lead guitar part on this? And he put something down, and we were all like... <laughs> 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 yeah, so... Um, yeah, it's exciting to have him on board. He's ex- I mean, he's played in European countries, and but he had... You know, yeah, he's, so I... I w- stadiums. I went out <laughs> with, to Brussels. Yeah, it was this. It was just just before lockdown. So yeah. It must have been about February 2020. Um, we went out, flew out to Brussels to meet him halfway through his European tour with Liam Gallagher. <laughs> he's there playing the big, massive arena in Brussels. And then he comes and does a 300 cap with us in Blackpool. And he's like, yeah, I fancy, yeah, I I fancy a bit of this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant isn't it <laughs> it's so niche show that like I did not expect you to come in today and be like yeah yeah just got one of Twisted Wheel boys in him <laughs> yeah he's just like, but like a football I, transfer window to the side but he's another one so he's saying like Joe Joe that was the original guitarist yeah he can do everything he's just an absolute mis- like a wizard like yeah, yeah especially for someone like me who's not really a musician I can play a bit of piano a bit of guitar mm. but I just stand there and, and shout really at the front of the stage and you've got people like that. Joe can do everything. And Ben's the same. He, he, he can play bass, he can play drums. He calls him, he's called himself a drummer, but he's actually a lead guitar. Do you know what? It's, it's, it's just stupid, like, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. just that, how do you get that good? Like, do you know what I mean? It's, I don't know. <laughs> it's what you want to be surrounded by, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So are you on stage, are you quite high energy then? How would you sort of describe how you are on stage? Are you very high energy in your face, sort of right at the front of the stage, or are you more sort of reserved? No, I'm, I am very lively. Um, constantly moving about that's what I want um, that's what I want in the front man yeah to constantly moving about and I think the big thing of us as well is a lot of people mention it you know after they've seen us is we just have a laugh on stage like genuinely in between tunes there's there's no plan as to what we're going to say or anything like that the drummer um, I'm, I'm 
pointing behind me because he's always there. <laughs> but honestly, I, I wish he was back from Jersey so he could have come on this. Uh, he's fucking... You'll have never met anyone like him. He's crackers. Is he a proper drummer? Yeah, honestly. Like <laughs> yeah. We played she a festival in Sheffield last week and before the gig, he went to this chippy across the road and all he said in between every tune... So sometimes I don't even talk in between a tune because he'll just start waffling. <laughs> so I'll just stand there having a swig until he's like until he's done waffling and the next tune comes in. In between every single tune, all he went on about was this Brenda's chippy. <laughs> It's like he was on commission for this. He's saying to the crowd, oh, but you need to get in Brenda's chippy, proper, proper fish and chips. Like, and then he finishes the next tune, he's like, and I'm a proper fish, man, I'm from Fleetwood, me, you know. And then after the gig, we've come off stage and that. And so you get your bearings backstage and that, and we've gone out and watched a few of the other bands. And people are coming up to us in the festival with <laughs> fucking chippy. Brenda's chippy, saying, it is good, this, isn't it? Like, he's just, he's a not right. But that's, that's us on stage, like, just... Have a, have a laugh, take the piss. It's you know what you want, though, isn't up it? Up there to yeah. have, a, have a good time, do you know what I mean? Especially if you are, because as you are sort of <coughs> building as a band, you need that bit of, not arrogance, actually, I'm going to call it arrogance, because I, I think <laughs> I think bands should be arrogant on stage. Yeah, like, yeah. You should go on and be like, right, you're going to like me, Yeah, yeah. and this is why I'm showing. <laughs> like, I love that. That's why when I saw Shave for the first time, I was like, right, yeah, yeah. You've got a base. You, yeah, you've got a basis there who's just giving it beats. I like, just talking <laughs> to the crowd. And I'm like, this is me, this. I'm yeah. like, this is great. Like, it's what you want. You want to be sort yeah, of different. I, I think so. It's it's sort of like, especially with you being an upcoming band, I'm not saying it's the right way to do it, but it, it definitely makes me feel more comfortable. I think yeah, of when you have a lot of people watching you, when you're playing these little festivals or support slots, it can be a bit awkward, can't it? Do you know if you're watching yeah. a band and you don't know any of the tunes and stuff? And it can be a bit awkward on stage as well if you know that all the crowd is just stood there staring back at you. So I think breaking the ice with talking about Brenda's chippy and just having a bit Cracking of a, laugh, a joke, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it works. And like I said, it definitely makes me feel more comfortable. So. And that's what you want, especially when you're a bit isolated being <laughs> yeah, the lead at the time. When you're right yeah. in the front, it's very an isolated yeah, place yeah. and it's just you in the mic. You're like, <laughs> big, big light on you. You can't see, fuck all. You're like, is it 50 people out there? Is it 500? I yeah, don't know. How the fuck's it going? But the other thing with him at the behind me he's he's so unpredictable as well so, so when you get to like the end of a tune like we always we obviously is he back in singer then yeah well we do three part harmony so bass, oh, nice. bass player he, he can sing as well drummer very good singer I'm probably the third best singer yeah. the <laughs> honestly mate, if you go on our Instagram in a bit there's a video of them or TikTok them two singing karaoke about half an hour before our headline Blackpool gig just went in a karaoke bar down the road yeah Fucking hell, everyone was like, fucking hell, are they not the singers? No, I was like, no, I am. <laughs> but yeah, he's dead unpredictable. We get to like the end of a uh, end of the set and I think we're done. And he's like, he's dead like the most ADHD person ever meet. He's like that excited and he'd be like, we're going again, we're going again. And I'm like, I'm not ready to walk off stage. Uh, fucking, fucking hell, they could have warned me like. <laughs> you're having, having to be like, right, we can't do anything in the last 10 minutes. We can't plan for anything just in case we overrun. Yeah, and I say thank you to the crowd and that I'm about to walk off stage. He's like, no, you're not fucking going, mate. We're going again. I'm like, right, here we go. He's a drum, mate. He's in charge. Of <laughs> if the drum beat kicks in, you've got to carry you can't, on. Can't not, can you? Yeah. <laughs> Drummers are the same, but like, they're, they're all they off are. their head. They are. It's, they're all the same. I don't know. It's got to be something, something not wired. Right, they're, yeah. they're like goalkeepers in football. Yeah. And, yeah. And I can't remember who first said that to me. But I've never resonated so much. Like they're so likable. Yeah. Because they're just so off true. their head. Like, there's just no one like a drummer. No, there isn't. And to be fair, like I couldn't be a drummer. No. They're always late as well. He's <laughs> never been on time for anything. And it's the same when you go to you're always waiting for the drummers of the other bands. It's like I don't don't know what they do, but don't know, don't think, like, God don't think they can tell the time. <laughs> <laughs> He's too busy eating chippy and doing outside, isn't it? Yeah, in Brenda's chippy. So I want to talk a little bit more about sort of like coming from a small town like Blackpool where I'm saying everyone knows everyone. It's very, the, the football culture has been growing, hasn't it? In, in yeah. the last, especially the last 20 years. Like, it's yeah. mental. Are you yeah. into your football as well? Yeah, yeah, Blackpool fan. Um, so I don't go as much as I used to. When you I live in Manchester, kid. don't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, the, and there was the boycott as well. Do you know about yeah, Blackpool? Yeah, yeah, because so, he's the owner. Yeah, there's, so I used to go week every single week I played for Blackpool as a kid um, from when I was like seven so when you play for Blackpool you get a free season ticket class yeah so that was it I just started going through that and then I left Blackpool when I was about 13 because I just went to go and play with my mates and that so mm. then I bought my season ticket and it was just everywhere and then as I got to about 14 
started going the aways as well. Um, me and our mates, me, me and our mates would go on the coaches, and obviously you'd have me, like none of me, my dad or anyone didn't come, but we'd yeah. go all the like, the older fellas would look after the. Of course, the lads yeah, that were on yeah, the you coach. get to know people, don't you? Yeah, so that prem season, I was in year ten at school, I think, and just went everywhere, all over the country as, as a fifteen year old lad. Chelsea away watching us get twatted about five nil. <laughs> you know, but it was the it was the best time. Like, you know, just every single week if we were at home, we'd go. If we were away, you'd get on the coach and go. I'd go. Yeah. Um, and then it was the same up until the boycott happened. The boycott happened just as I was going to uni. Okay. So it sort of worked quite well because I was like, well, I wasn't going to get to the games much anyway. Anyway, yeah. Um, but then since then, I've I've not had a season ticket. But I still go. Um, so I've probably been to about 10, 10 games this season. Yeah. Um, but obviously with the band stuff, being in Manchester. It's hard um, to find your time, and I, isn't it? I play footy on a Saturday as well, so I've got, <laughs> got loads going on. So Who did you play for on a Saturday? Hinesford. So what, 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 what are you going to end? Because be, be Manchester was so many leagues. Is it one of the Manchester It's leagues? the Ma- Manchester Prem, yeah. The Prem, yeah, yeah, right. Is that the one with like um, old, with like Corinthians and old... Oh, them, yeah, sort of. old alts and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rochdale Sacred Art and all yes, that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the band and footy sort of take up my time, but I try and get, get to the games as much as I can. Is that like one below step? Six. Steps. Yeah, so if we go up, we go to North West Counties. That's when it's, That's cla- it. so it's classed as semi pro. So were you yeah. in the same league as St. Ellen's this year, or were they in a se- like a separate one? No, they're se- separate. Because St. Ellen's have just won their league in, that must be like the Liverpool sort of region right, to go into yeah. North West Counties. Because right, I saw yeah. it, like Berry were tweeting it all over the place. Right. It's like the first time they've made it into like the actual football pyramid. Right, okay. Yeah, so we're just the one below that. Um, I wouldn't. I, I did a bit of like Northwest Counties when I was younger, but I couldn't be doing that with my job and stuff now. The travelling around work. and stuff. So I'm, I'm like, I don't play every week because of the because of the band. Yeah. So I'm just that where I need to be really. Yeah. Just there for having fun. Yeah, yeah. I play the game, take it a bit serious, but then have a pint after. Yeah, like, that's what I you want. That's, yeah, and it's a good set of lads as well. And I bet there's some good players playing in your league still as well. Oh, I bet you've yeah. got former. Not, not not former non league players definitely yeah yeah like a base. few that should have made it like definitely um, ex, ex, you have ex pros come into that league Jesus. as well it's, there's a few for Rochdale that were um, that were ex pros remember playing one of them was at Preston for a few years <laughs> and you're just playing him he's like 36 and I'm trying to mark him in centre mid I'm thinking how the fuck is this 36 year old running rings <laughs> 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 I, I, I remember watching it I, I went to watch the Glossop had like a playoff game they got relegated last year, but it was a great relegation playoff where they played the third place in the league below. Yeah. And it was this random tiny town in the northeast of England. Like I've got no idea who they were even now. Um and basically there was this old fella playing centre half. And I was looking at him. He was the best player on the pitch by Miles. Yeah. And I mean Miles. And I, I I was Googling, I was like, he's gotta be an ex pro. I'd look at him, he's like forty. Wait, wait, on his profile. He's a bloody top scorer for but he's a by by Spartan's top goal scorer of all time. He played up front for him for about 15 years. So like when Bly Spartan used to get into playing like the FA Cup and stuff and like in the National League, he used to score by banging 20 goals season. And he was playing centre half. <laughs> and he was just like, he was the best player on the pitch by Bowser. And me and my mate were looking at him like, what's he doing there now? Yeah. And then they, they, they won the game and got promoted and they only won it because he was just, just they had this class. big lump playing up front. Like 6'8". Scored two headers and he was just bullying everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I was watching it like, it's just so long league, I it, love it. It is mental though. Like when you play against them players and you just think like, they, they don't even need, they're not, they're not fast. Like you've got the pace on yeah. them and stuff, but they don't need to run. Like they, they just know where to be and they're just so, the first touch is always right. It's it's hard work. I remember playing a charity game once. It was like, um, it was all people, ex-pros that were linked to Blackpool. Yes, sir. And I was marking in, in centre mid, um, Jamie Milligan, who, who he played a bit lower, like he came through at Everton, yeah, and then he, he played for like Fleetwood and stuff. But Trevor Sinclair as well. Fuck you, <laughs> it was me and my mate Sam Mon- Montgomery. He's called in centre mid. I went to school with him. Me and him in centre mid against Trevor Sinclair and uh, Jamie Milligan. And to be fair, I feel I feel like I had the beating of Trevor Sinclair. <laughs> he, he was a bit he, he was a bit older, and he but Jamie Milligan. To be fair, he was still gaffing it. I was thinking. Fuck yeah, like, <laughs> what are you doing mate it was, it was mad like Brett Holmrod was up front <laughs> 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 Trevor Sinclair's quite big in the um, like the scene round here at the moment as well because I'm sure his son plays for Curzon and doing quite well as well yeah, yeah. I'm sure his son's playing for Curzon 
and obviously he's a big city head anyway. He used to yeah, play yeah, for City as well. Yeah. He, he, he's sort of been around the block. That's mad, that. <laughs> you playing against Brett Armrod playing up front. He must have been long retired as well because he was playing pro football five, yeah, six years to, ago. It, well, yeah, it wasn't that... Because this was about three years ago, this charity. So he must game, have only it? just retired. Yeah. It was a, it was, it was a laugh like. You watching him be like, well, "What are you doing here? <laughs> Why are you so much better than me?" <laughs> I do love that sort of because I had um, interviewed um, Curtis National goalkeeper called Cam Mason, um, and he was talking to me about how he played a six a side game organised by Stephen Island. And he turned up and it was like Julian Lescott was there, Stephen Island, a load of like football league players, and he was just there like. What am I doing here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, am I, yeah. what, what am I doing here? And you're like, shit. I do love the lower league system. Though. I, I yeah, just think it's class. fascinating. It is class. There's a couple of... Um, stuff in, on, on the City podcast, there's a couple of American lads on there who are big City fans. And sometimes when we're talking about the lower league system to them, fuck, their minds go... <laughs> like, it's try, trying to explain to them how a club in step six, Berry, had 7,000 people turn out to see them. And they had no idea. Yeah, it's... but it'd be the same in music as well. Like, imagine trying to say to them that, oh yeah, um, a, a band who had three songs out managed to film a film, yeah, <laughs> film it... a Bloomfield Road. There's, there's, there's nowhere quite like England. Is there? No, I mean like, like, like that with with football. Like, I know you could argue is Prem the best league in the world and stuff, but in terms of as a country, there's nowhere else that comes even close in terms of the depth of quality. Do you know, like, like we we've got people like say playing in like the the counties and the leagues above the Northern Prem and stuff, that if they were living in Spain, they'd be in the what the league below the La yes. Liga, do you know what I Because mean? it just drops off in other countries. But here, it's, there's just depth all over the place. And like, say, same with music. There's just music going on. Absolutely. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And boxing as well. Isn't it? Everyone's a pro boxer, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've interv- I love interviewing pro boxers. I love it because they're just so different to me about their mindset. Like, I couldn't ever... <laughs> just be as regimented and as structured as them. I'm too ADHD for it. I have to be like here, there, <laughs> everywhere. Whereas they're just this, this, this and this. Yeah. They've got to be nailing it all the time. So I love interviewing boxers because they're just, and some of them are just off their head as well, which is great entertainment as well. But it's a bit like a joke. You've got to be off your head to get, <laughs> yeah, to get, to get punched in the face, haven't you, for a living. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with, with your brother as well, so your brother is just like a journeyman in, in the northwest scene then, is that right? Yeah, well, all over the country. He, he's down in London all the time. So what he did was, he was like me, he just played footy as a kid. And he got to like 17, I think he was. He was like, I'm just going to start boxing now. Like we'd always trained. We'd always, we'd always yes, gone to the gym yeah, and, yeah. and boxed ourselves, but not like never really thought about fighting. No. And he got to 17, he was like, I'm just going to do an unlicensed fight. And my mum was like, oh, don't, don't do that. Anyway, he's done it, won it, and he got a bit of a bug. So he just, from 17, he's now like 31. He was just doing unlicensed fighting up until a couple of years ago. And he was, he was, he was doing unlicensed like on a weekend, yeah, and getting a few hundred quid, you know, just and he he was he had links in like all over the country, um, and he's fighting some big names as well, like in the unlicensed scene, and then someone said to him like, "You're getting paid this. Why don't you you fighting every week? Why don't you just go pro, and do what you're doing now and just get a bit of extra money?" Yeah, easy. So he, was, he was just like, "Yeah, fuck it. Like, Why not?" And he's not. He's not like a regimented boxer. He's fucking kebab. Like, yeah, he he's... loves a bevy. Um, but he's a tough lad. You know, he, he, he's art. He can handle himself. So he's like, yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. So then by the time everything had gone through and he turned pro, he went to the, um, what was it called? Like the open workout. For nice, the, yeah, yeah. For the Amir Khan, Kel Brook thing and Fraser Clark was fighting on it. Yeah. So that was on like the Wednesday. And then he gets a phone call after that saying... But he hasn't had a pro fight yet. Fraser Clark hasn't, neither is my brother. He gets a phone call saying, would you fight Fraser Clark on Saturday? Um, his opponent's pulled out. How big's your brother, may I ask? He's only my height, but he's, he's, he's a big lad. So he, But he's nowhere near the weight of Fraser Clark. So I was going to say he can't The be thing good. is, if he trained, he wouldn't be a heavyweight. No. He, he's a heavyweight because of his life. Yeah. <laughs> so when, he, when he's in the ring against Fraser Clark, he looks fucking tiny. <laughs> but anyway, he's like, he, he'll literally fight anyone. Like, yeah, he's, he's not, not, he's yeah, not he's he's, he game. don't give yeah. a fuck like and we tell him like fucking hell you're gonna have to knock it on the head at some point but he's just not arsed he's like yeah I'll fight Fraser Clark <laughs> so we're all like fucking hell, fair play goes in he looked alright for his first minute or so it? but just too powerful he's fighting an Olympic yeah. medalist yeah. <laughs> um, 
yeah, he got he got done. But he's had he's had something daft like twenty five fights or something in in like two two years. He's won he's won a couple, but he he is a good journeyman to be fair. No, it's like, yeah. it sounds weird to say, but no, I'm I'm into my boxing. You need a good journeyman. Yeah. Someone who'll go in and not get knocked out. Basically, yeah, he's, a, it. he's a job of a journeyman. He's only been stopped a few times, and when he has been, it's been against very decent people. Yeah, um, he just goes the distance. Like protect- what boxers want for the yeah. first six fights, you you don't want like six knockouts, really, ideally, because yeah, you don't learn you, about yourself. You the need the rounds and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. he just goes in, does his thing, and and gets, gets paid. For paid it. Yeah, um, he's fighting Dave Allen next week. Dave Allen on Saturday, yeah. So he was he was sparring Dave Allen quite a bit, and they've, they've become quite quite close pals. Um, and Dave, Dave, Dave and his team have reached out saying, "Do we fancy, do you fancy fancy a little bit of a tear up in Sheffield?" So yeah, he's just been my brother's been at Benny just been in Jersey with, with us fucking on this weekend. Dave Allen's an hard bastard. Oh, mate, yeah, he's a fucking tough lad. My brother, my brother said he even sparring him, he went, he can fucking bang. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so good luck to him. Dave Allen, <laughs> Dave Allen's based in Yorkshire, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, I think, is it Doncaster? Yeah, he's that, so, he's, well, you, you know him as a white rhino, basically, people yeah, watching. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so, I've been, fo- I follow him, everyone follows him on Instagram, yeah, he's, he's just, he's a funny fucker. Um, and I've been following how he's just been getting ripped up the last, like, Eight weeks. Yeah, yeah. He's, well, he's, a funny, he's built like a brick shit house at the moment. I wish I had the text on me on my phone to show you. So when we were in Jersey this week, yeah, yeah. Um, he's, t- he's texted my brother a, a selfie. I think he put it on his Instagram as well. The picture of him, like, yeah, down. yeah. He texted my brother saying, "This is my current shape. What, what, what shape is your nutritionist got you in?" And my brother sent a picture back like this. Fucking big belly. <laughs> but they'll have a go at each other. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, that's boxing in it. You know, it's that's the game. They, they all respect each other but when they get in the ring they'll they'll both have a good punch <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm away this weekend um, I'm going out to Copenhagen nice and then over to Sweden so I'm, I'm not going to be able to go which is it'll be a good night <laughs> it'll be a fucking great be night. A good night who's headlining do you know is it just I don't know it's not like a massive show I, th- I think it might be Dave and my brother I think it's not like... it, it might yeah because he, he, he trains a lot of fighters over there because I know he's trained Joe Aiden at the moment who's like 12 and 0 I think He's tra- tra- so maybe yeah. he's doing a show for his fight of his fighters, right? Which would make sense. Yeah, it's a big be, name, yeah, yeah, jump on it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know too much about it. To be oh, fair. I can't believe he's fighting Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I know, heavy in it. <laughs> he's, a, he's an hard guy. I'm like, I like that. He can bang. Yeah, I, I was also I saw a mad thing on Twitter. Right, so do you know when we talk about Wardley and Clark? Yeah, Wardley started as a as a white collar boxer. Yeah, yeah. Imagine. So, for example, if you just go into the gym, you might think, oh, white collar sounds a bit of fun. Imagine going to white collar and you have your Wardley boxing your head off. Trying to scrap in, yeah. And it's, <laughs> he kill you. Wait, and it, no one must have ever hurt him in, in, in the unlicensed No. He was getting pinged last night, wasn't he, all over yeah. the show, and he just kept coming. He's got, he's got some chin on him. <laughs> I know. Imagine going up against a white collar, going up against him. I'd be like, fuck. Yeah, like, maybe. Cured, Luckily, he's not in my way. Can't grow five foot now. I'm five nine. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't coming up against people like that. Definitely, um, mate. Massive thanks for coming down yeah, as well. So, good. where can we find you on socials? Um, so Instagram's the main one. Um, All right, music. I think we are on there. Mm. Twitter, um, same handle. TikTok. I'm venturing into that game, but. Um, I'd say Instagram's the. I wanted to actually. We'll oh, finish a little bit yeah. on that because your Insta following's mad. You know, every reel you get is like four or five k views minimum. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's mad, isn't it? Like, where's that come? <laughs> is, is that just been like over time you built it up or like? I, th- I think so. Yeah, we've got a few thousand followers, haven't we? But reels can like. It's like five six k you got, I think. I mean, but your reels are just. Yeah, they you do. don't have one that bombs. Yeah, it is weird. They all seem to like at least reach a thousand, don't they? I don't know. I think. We do, we do a couple where, do you know, you, um, what do you collab it? We've done yes. a couple of them. With yeah, that's what, that's what I do these episodes. Yeah, I and they're the ones that get massive because they feel and have a big following. So I'm not sure if because of them ones, the, the other ones do. I don't, I don't know. I don't know the art of social Mate, media. It's, 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 I, I was having a look through and I was like, you've got like a few here which are going to like tens of thousands, like hundreds. And I'm like... Yeah, I don't know the don't know the secret. I'll push but, you yeah, through, mate. Keep them coming. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, hundred percent. So it's all right. Music on majority of things. I'll pop them all in the description yeah, anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then for yourself, you just Joe at Joe Darnell. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, Joe Darnell is my personal one. Yeah, Fantastic, yeah. mate. Massive thanks for me down. No, cheers, and, and me. Things. When you're in Manchester, please let me know because I do want to come and see you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. If you are listening on Spotify, please do give a five star review. 
does help push this podcast out to more people. If you are on YouTube, please do like, comment and subscribe. And let me know who you want to see on this podcast and I'll try and reach out to many people. But Joe, cheers, mate. And cheers, pal. Okay. Nice one.